Hello, and welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Ranj, and tonight I'll be giving you the Capra Comparison Picks for UFC Vegas 48. These are select fights. I already did two uh, Capra Comparison videos. I did early prelims, and then I did some more prelims yesterday. Be sure to check those out. And moving up the, well, the order is messed up from when I originally did all my research, so it's not necessarily the right order. But moving up my order, we've got uh, some more select fights, meaning one of these, this one, actually, this is the uh, curtain jerker for the main card. This is the curtain jerker for the prelims. And this, Tabology now has this listed as the feature fight, which... Uh, it's kind of odd, but uh, if anything, this should be more of a feature fight than this. But whatever, I don't make the order. I don't know who does that, but um, we're going to go this way. Starting with the curtain jerker for the prelims. The very first opener of the entire card, we've got at Bantamweight, Jesse Strader. Sui Genes Generis. That's his uh, nickname. I think I'm saying it right. Sui Generis. Jesse Strader comes in as the big underdog, two to one underdog, plus 203. That line moved from plus 230, meaning money's coming in on it because he's taking on this vicious kid named Chad and Helliger and Helliger. Chad and Helliger is, well, he's not a kid. He's actually a little bit older than Jesse Strader. I'm going to write that in there. He's 35. Jesse Strader's 30. But this guy is vicious. He's uh, the monster, that's his nickname, the monster, Chad Ep and Helliger. Um, he is a plus or a minus 238 favorite with a record of 11 and 5. So over double the amount of fights than Jesse Strader. And the double the amount of favoritism too, because he's minus 238, meaning you have to put that up to win 100 bucks. So that, bleh, there's no, no uh, value there. But. Um, Let's talk about him first anyway. He fights out of Champions Creed Martial Arts. That is in Alberta, Canada. And he trains there with uh, Hakeem Dawoodoo. Comes out of that camp. I think that's like those two are the only UFC fighters out of that place. And actually, um, this is Chad uh, and Helliger's first. This is UFC debut. He is coming off a contender series win over Muin Gafarov, a split decision. But he does have a, also a win over Brady Highstan. You saw him back on that one Ultimate Fighter house show, like the, you know, when they bring all the Ultimate Fighter champs over to be on a UFC card. He was in that. Um, but the Chad, Chad is on a nine fight win streak. Pretty good. He's fought in other Canadian promotions, such as Rise, Modern FC, um, Rec MMA. These are small Canadian promotions, regional scene up there in Canada. And um, the monster, here's the thing though, I guess Chad and Helliger might have the shortest reach in the entire UFC, I heard. He's definitely had the shortest reach on this card. Even the women outreach him. He's got 64 inch reach, so he's got some, some small T-Rex arms. I never did my reach, but I'm sure I'm right around with him. I have, I have short arms, whatever. Um, Chad and Helliger, though, I guess uh, he, can, he can use those short arms and get on the inside and pop a lot of shots. He's pretty good on his feet, upstanding and punching. Like that, that win against Brady High Stand, that was via punches in round three. And the guy has an unstoppable gas tank. He's never going to gas out. Now let's talk about Jesse Strader on the other hand. Jesse Strader, not a lot of hype behind this guy. He's uh, coming off a loss to Montel Jackson. He got right hook, ground and pound, round one. I think it was like a minute in, maybe a minute and a half. I don't know. It wasn't that long though. It was less than two minutes for sure. Um, before that, he was uh, he had a win against Isaiah Batten Gonzalez, and then a win against Michael Jackson. Both 
fighters from Combate, that is the uh, Mexican regional scene over there, because Justice Strader is from South California, SoCal, SoCal Fight Factory and Chemo's Fight Factory. He's fighting out of there. Um, he has a notable loss to Marcelo Rojo, so he's 3-2 and two in his last five, and the thing is the only... The people he's beat are not anybody, you know, every time he's fought somebody with a name, he's lost. But Chad and Helliger, does he really have a name? Maybe up in Canada, but otherwise, I don't know. I don't see, I don't understand why he's a minus 238 favorite. And Jesse Strader has an eight inch reach advantage. I told you this, this dude Chad's got some short arms. Jesse Strader's got eight inch reach advantage. A uh, little little note I put, you know, Aaron Carter, the singer, he had the celebrity boxing match against Lamar Odom where he got rocked. But look at the size, look at the difference, though. Lamar Odom was a professional athlete going against a pop, soft rap singer. That who who did who was that matchmaking? But anyway, Jesse Strader was Aaron Carter's boxing coach in preparation for that celebrity boxing match. I thought that was. Interesting. So Jesse Strader, you have to would assume, has a little boxing skills himself. I think he might have been Golden Gloves. I can't verify that though. But um, this is going to be an interesting fight. We got the dude with the eight-inch reach advantage going against Mr. Hype. So let's see what the cappers have to say in this one. Starting off with Chan and Helliger, the monster. We've got. Um, Dev the Dude and Sal, my boys, my buds. Dev said uh, by finish, so I'm gonna just say within distance. And Sal said by submission. Dev and Sal, that's two cappers there. Then we've got the MMA Guru, that's the one with the knit cap from the UK. Guru is saying TKO in round three for Mr. T-Rex Arms, the little monster, and Helliger. And uh, we have the MMA Fortune Teller. Oh, I shouldn't have wrote, I should have just wrote Teller. MMA, I'm just going to write Teller now. MMA Fortune Teller is also taking Ann Helliger. We have uh, a new set of handicappers they are um uh, from um i think sheer dog sheer dog radio net podcast radio network or something they are keith shillian shillin and ben duffy their show is called shillin and duffy shillin oh i gotta change that it's a lot of writing both of these guys though ben duffy and keith shillin both Taking the side of Anna Hilliger. The thing is, sometimes with these two, only one of them will make a prediction and then they'll just move on. Or, you know, it's 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 sometimes they don't both give a give a they, like one guy would just pass. Ah, uh, pass. You know, it happens though. People like to pass. And finally, to finish this all out, we have the Fight Night Pick Brothers. But uh, funny thing. They are disagreeing in this one as Matt, the younger Matt Allen, the younger brother here of the Allen brothers, Fight Night Picks, is taking Ann Hilliger. But Craig, the older brother from Fight Night Picks, Craig is taking Jesse Strader. And I think he's taking him specifically because he's got an eight inch reach advantage because he could not leave this dude's reach alone. He's the one that said he thinks he's got the lowest reach, shortest reach in all of the UFC. And he's the one, Craig is also the one who pointed out, he's the shortest reach on the entire card, even shorter than the females that are fighting. And there's uh, some uh, straw weights, right? There are. So yeah. <laughs> but uh, I guess the guy can use his little T-Rex arms and bang. So I don't know. Minus 238 favorite. Uh, so I guess um, I don't, I really, 
Screw it. I'm going. I don't know. I can't. I can't. Let's see these guys last five. This guy. Aside from Brady Highstand, he's on a nine-fight win streak, but it's all the Canadian regional scene. I didn't check if there were cans or not, but he hasn't really fought anybody worth noting except for Brady Highstand. This uh, Justice Strader, though, the only people worth noting that he's fought, he's lost to. Marcelo Rojo and Montel Jackson. He de did beat Michael Jackson. I think Michael Jackson, of, co of course, not the pop star and not the football receiver either. But I think Michael Jackson did have a name in the fight scene for a while, so I suppose that might, I didn't look, I gotta look at the records. I didn't really check these guys out that well. But eight inch reach advantage, plus money, plus 203. I'm gonna go with uh, Strader. I'm gonna take the underdog here, dog pass. Craig's with me. And I think he's gonna get it by decision. I heard Strader, I've seen Strader get knocked out though that uh by montel jackson but montel jackson's got had like four inch reach on straighter imagine if he was going against ann hegler helliger and helliger so i'm gonna go with the physical attributes he's gonna be the much bigger guy watch what you see on the scales what's the height oh there's only one inch height difference but look at the length of the arms he's gonna have four inches per arm that's a whole Fist. That's a whole fist per arm extra over this guy. So I don't know. And this guy, he's unproven still. So straighter, but it's a low level fight. But it's going to be interesting nonetheless. That's why I'm taking the dog, dog or pass there for me. So we'll go with that. Moving on. Next, we have the. Oh, I, wrong order, but I'm going to go with the big boys, the heavyweights in Parker, Porter, Porter, Parker. Parker Porker, Parker, Par Parker Porter. Parker Porter taking on Alan Boudol. Okay, Parker Porter is the sizable favorite here, minus 260 with a record of 12 wins, six losses as a professional. He's taking on Alan Boudol. The Frenchman comes in with a record of eight wins, two losses, and one no contest to uh, his most recent fight to Rodrigo Nascimento, where Rodrigo Nascimento did give him a submission loss, but then it was overturned because they found out he was on psychotic stimulants. Okay, Rodrigo Nascimento. Okay, psychotic, like a psycho, psycho stimulants. That's what typologist calls it, refers to him as psycho stimulants. That means you're, you're taking psychotic drugs, messing with your mind thought to make you stimulated to give you more aggression that shit just sounds movie like right psycho psycho stimulants interesting rodrigo nascimento all right but anyway so that fight was overturned um and uh before that look might as well stick with alan Bado now the black samurai but is he really ah <laughs> he's uh, 34 years old Parker Porter is 36, so no, and these are heavyweights, so they can definitely fight within the late 30s up and through to the early 40s. Uh, Black Samurai, before that no contest loss to Rodrigo Nascimento, he got beat up pretty bad, pretty good by uh, Tom Aspinall. Tom Aspinall, the British boxing guy, he's fantastic. I think he's going to be top five this this year and he might even take a chance of going up for for a strap who knows tom espinel took care of business at alan Bado, ground and pound round one um he had another loss that was actually changed to a win when he fought todd stout he got submitted but they overturned that and just gave him the win because Todd Stout was on weed. Marijuana. He tested positive for marijuana. So they told you. That's a weird one. I don't know. That's how I wrote it down, though. So he's two, two, and one in his last five. But if you take those losses that were turned around, like the no contest to Rodrigo Nascimento and the loss to Todd Stout that was flipped because of weed, he'd really be um, one three and one 
not not a good look for Alan Badeau, the Black Samurai. One good thing he's got going for him here is he will have a three inch height advantage and a four inch reach advantage over Parker Porter. He trains also, he trains with uh, Cyril Gaon over at MMA Fight Factory, but as you can see, Cyril Gaon's last fight, his fight IQ is not that, like, what, why go for the heel hook? I'm still salty about that. Anyway, whatever, that's in the past. Let's look at this fight. So, Alan Badeau, Fight Factory, Fernan Lopez, coach Fernan Lopez, great striking coach, but you know what? You don't hear about good, good ground wrestlers or grapplers coming out of Fight Factory, I'll tell you that. Parker Porter, he comes out of Underdog MMA. That's in um, West Hartford, Connecticut. I go to Connecticut frequently for work. We have a, another, oh, covering the logo. We have another branch out in Connecticut and I often visit there. I have to look at jobs there. So I, I tend to go to Parker Porter country all the time. I, I exaggerate, nobody calls it Parker Porter country. But anyway, I do go to Connecticut a lot. I've been to West Hartford. I was there like two weeks ago. Um, Parker Porter's coming off a win against Chase Sherman. That is not Chase Sherman who doesn't beat him. Um, Alan Badeau might even have a chance. No, I don't know. That's tough. That would, that would be a good, tough fight to pick. Alan Badeau versus Chase Sherman. But um, then before that, he has a win against Josh Parisian. Decent. A little better than Chase Sherman. He, then he took his loss to Chris Dawkus, whose brother is on this fight. Uh, card we're gonna talk about him tomorrow, but uh, You know not a bad loss Chris Dawkins. as he did get folded by the black beast Derek Lewis His last fight out like folded like weak knees ugh, just melted So um Parker Porter though not bad. He's four and won his last five um, That Chris Dawkins fight was actually his UFC debut. He did get a uh, Punches a need to in, to TKO finish in round one, but USC debut and it's against a fast, apt Chris Dawkins. But um, before that, he was fighting in CES. That's the Classic Entertainment Sports out of uh, that's the regional scene in Connecticut. Go figure. And he had some fights in Bellator because Bellator goes to Foxwoods in Connecticut. Interesting enough, and you know what? If you look deep on his topology way back in the day, I want to say maybe uh, 2014, he has to fight against John Jones in WCF. John Jones knocked him out round one, but still, nonetheless, he does have that experience. He can check that off his bucket list. Okay, so Parker Porter, minus 260 favorite. Let's see who's taking him. Let's get down to business. We've got um, both the brothers this time, the Allen brothers fighting the picks. Agree and Park Reporter should be able to win this. Dev is saying by decision for Park Reporter. And Sell, Sell the Red, is saying, he's just saying Park Reporter, he didn't say how. Okay, then we've got um, MMA Guru, also by decision. Paka Pata. Um, uh, the Sheer Dog Podcast. Both Keith Schillen and Duffy are taking Park Reporter. We're just gonna write Sheer Dog. That's what that's what the channel is. It's this or it's called the Sheer Dog Podcast. Sheer Dog. That's Duff Ben Duffy, Keith Schillen. They're both saying TKO. Duffy is saying by uh, round two. And uh, Shillin's saying round one. Duffy's not even saying TKO, he's saying straight up KO. He thinks he's gonna knock him out. So um, there's that. And finally, to finish the full capper consensus, we've got MMA fortune teller, the teller, the teller, taking Parker Porter to beat Ellen, the Black Samurai, Bado, Bado. For a full capper consensus, I would be loud with it and I would do the dance, but I did work a 12 hour day and my kids are already in bed and I don't want to have to wait here for my wife that I, you woke the kids up. It is kind of getting kind of late. I've been doing these late videos. What? Did I just hear one of them peeping?
bed or not. It's past their bedtime. <laughs> All right, anyway. Weird noise coming out of the kitchen. It's probably my cats. Okay, so anyway, this is a full Capra consensus. I'll do the dance though. Full Capra consensus. Throw some good luck pearls to all you betters out there. A full Capra consensus is when all the Cappers agree on one fighter to, and they take one side of the whiteboard. They're all in agreement, making it a consensus pick. Everybody's in agreement. Everybody thinks Parker Porter is going to wipe the floor with Alan Badeau. I can't go against the consensus in this case. I like to do that, but I got to go with Parker Porter right here and go with the cappers. I don't like the minus 260, but you know what? It's kind of fair. I wouldn't price it that high. I would probably give them like a minus, I don't know, minus 180, minus 190, because Alan Boudot does have a little bit of height, reach tail of the tape. But this guy, is a, Parker Porter's a tank. A tank. He's like, yeah, he's just, he's a big dude. Alan Boudot, you're going to see, has a smaller frame. He's not going to be as thick, but he will be a little bit taller, a little bit lengthier and reacher. Uh, further reach, like I said, three or four inches or something. Yeah, four inch reach, three inch height. So he's going to be a little bit bigger guy, but he's not going to be that imposing. Parker Porter is going to be much wider, I think. Parker Porter does have that weird small, his head's kind of small for his body. I, I saw it like an interview or something, just weird. It's like a perfect circle almost. Not really, not a perfect circle, but it's, I don't know. His, his his name fits his how he looks. Parker Porter. You look at you look at him. His name must be Parker Porter. It just I don't know. It's weird like that. But uh, I'm gonna take Parker Porter to get it done. I think it's gonna happen. Uh, he's gonna out strike. I don't know. Bado Fight Factory. They do know how to strike. And I don't think Parker Porter. I don't. I don't think this is gonna go to the ground. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna end. So I'm gonna say TKO. For Parker Porter, probably uh, round three. I never pick round three. Let's say round three. Okay, that's gonna be my pick for Tapology. Parker Porter, TKO round three. I think he's gonna rock him. Budo is gonna go down. Parker Porter's gonna jump on top, use his weight, and do a little bit of a hammer, hammer fist, ground and pound. That's what I think is gonna happen. It's my prediction. Moving on. Next we have. Oh. The Knockout Kings, the Head Kick Twins. <laughs> These guys, you know, back to back, like head kick wins and losses, common opponents. It's all, it's a big, big old head kick mess here. We had Joaquin Buckley, the new Mansa, taking on Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Abdul Razak Al Hassan is the underdog in this fight, Buckley being the favorite. At, he's got a record of 13 wins, four losses. Abdul Razak Al Hassan, 11 wins, four losses. So they both match up with the amount of losses. Jopin Buckley has got two more wins. Jopin Buckley, decent age advantage, which I noticed a lot of these cappers they seem to overlook it, and maybe because it's middleweight, but still, Buckley hasn't hit 30 yet. He's 27. Al Hassan. 36. He's over the 35 mark, which I know it's a bigger deal when it's a lighter weight. But still, age is a factor in all weight classes. The, the heavier the weight, the less of a factor it is. But 185, middleweight, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, I don't know. But um, in this case, Buckley has more UFC experience. You have more fight, more pro fight. So he's more, in UFC years, he's got the more knowledge. Okay, um. Let's see, let's talk about the favorite in Queen Buckley, New Mansa. Queen Buckley's coming off a win against Antonio Arojo, which I was never high on Antonio Arojo once I, so I saw Darren win that, that human bowling ball beat Antonio Arojo and that just, I faded him ever since. But uh, Joaquin Buckley took care of Antonio Arojo with a right hook in round three. I'm surprised Antonio Arojo even made it to round three to be honest with you. Um, before that, he took a head kick loss in round one to Alessio Di Chirico. Coincidentally, that is the most recent win by Abdul Razak Al-Hassan is against Alessio Di Chirico. 
the Shir Shiriko head got head kicked and uh, Abdul Razak Al Hassan took care of him with a head kick in 17 seconds of round one, and uh, but, and Joaquin Buckley got head kick round one from knocked out from Alessio DiCirico. Weird. It's just you know, it's messy, you know. Uh, back to Joaquin Buckley. Before that uh, head kick loss to DiCirico, he has a win against Jordan White Privilege, the Beverly Hills Ninja Jordan Wright. Um, he took care of him with hooks in round two, but Jordan Ray, I think, if he's not out of the UFC, he should be. He's not, it was just not cut out. He got like a lucky, lucky win against, uh, Jamie Pickett, the Night Wolf there, but, uh, it's just, I don't know. I just, I don't fancy Jordan Ray, but he does have like a persona about him because he's, he stands like tall with his chest out and everything and he's he, the Beverly Hills ninja born in Beverly Hills so you, you, you got to think he's born with a silver spoon in his mouth so I call him white privilege that's what I Jordan Wright Jordan Wright privilege but anyway um, enough of him he jo Joe Queen Buckley took care of Jordan Wright hooks round two and before that he had that uh, knockout of the year against Impa Kasangane with a jumping spinning back kick in the early round two also. Um, Joaquin Buckley does have a three inch reach advantage. These guys are the same height. Joaquin Buckley was fighting out of uh, Finney's Hit Squad and Mercy Lago, both like uh, Illinois or something like that. But now he is definitely out of Extreme Couture. His main training partner, action man, Chris Curtis. I saw that on Instagram. So, um, Abdul Razak al he trains out of Fortis MMA, if I forgot to say that. Did I mention? Oh, let's go to uh, talk about Abdul Razak al Hassan now. This guy, he's had his ups and downs in life. I, there was the accusations of um, stuff we're not supposed to say, talk about on YouTube. And there were just, claim, just claims, just accusations. I think the women were trying to set him up to try to get maybe some like a scam like try to get money or some crap out of him but uh he was accused of some bad things at duel was al hassan okay uh he's coming off that win against alessio di Chirico where he knocked him out 17 seconds with a head kick round one good fight um before that jacob malcoon who just who just won o over aj dobson this past weekend Jacob Malcoon beat Abdul Razak al Hassan by unanimous decision. That's a, that's Malcoon's uh, recipe now. You just got to out-wrestle him and just out-point him with con wrestling control and just get the decision every time. Um, before that, Abdul Razak al Hassan Judo Thunder is his name too, but I rarely see him use Judo. Um, he got knocked out by Chaos Williams, straight right hook, or a straight, just a straight right, not a hook, just straight right in round one. 30 seconds of round one. So Abdul Razak al Hassan has his quite a bit of short, not quite a bit, but he's had his share of short lasting fights too, being and on both ends as the winner and the loser. Just like Joe Quinn Buckley. This is a good matchup, guys. Um, before that, he had a loss to Monir Lazez, where he went the full distance, lost unanimous decision. And prior to that, he had a win against Nico Price. When? Round one, punches, 43 seconds of round one. Like I said, he's on both sides. He's either, seems like, well, he does go to decision too. So, who knows? Okay, um, two and three in his last five for Abdul Razak al -Hassan. Like I said, he was, tra he is presently training out of Fortis MMA in Dallas, Texas. So he does have some good uh, training partners down there. I don't, for some reason, every time I think Fortis, I think of um, Great White. Uh, what's his name? <laughs> Alex Morono. I, I don't know. I, I guess I'm a fan. I guess I'm a fan because as soon as I say Fortis, I think Alex Morono. But anyway, um, let's see what the cappers have to say. This line did move a little bit too. Um, and it's moved on the side of Buckley. It opened up. Buckley was a minus 150 favorite. And now it's to minus 164. So money's been coming in on Joe Queen Buckley. The bookies start want to make him less attractable, make Al Hassan more attractable. Al Hassan was a plus 125. That meaning if you throw your 100 bucks down, 
you win 125. Now, your 100 bucks will win you 144. That's how that works, plus money. Plus money, Abdul Razak Al Hassan. Okay, let's see what the cappers have to say in this interesting fight here. Um, taking the favorite in Jaqueen Buckley, we've got the MMA fortune teller. The teller, the teller. Also, the MMA guru, the guru, the guru. Guru, throwing up his Pepsi One or his Pepsi Max or whatever, diet soda. Then we've got um, the boys from Sheer Dog, both uh, Keith and Ben. Duffy is saying TKO round two. Keith Chillin is saying TKO round three. Just like last one. Yeah. Oh no, last time Chillin said, Park Reporter, he said round uh, one. But anyway, they both have TKO for Joaquin Buckley. Maybe even another showcase TKO that'll, you know, spitting, jumping back. I guess the Impa Kasangane, that was, that was impressive. I, I still, I love that. That was the knockout of the year, I think, in my opinion. Um, then we have some splits. We have some split people. We've got uh, Dev the Dude taking Joaquin Buckley by decision. And then we have, jump over here, we've got um, Cell. Cell, the red, is saying first round TKO for Abdul Razak Al Hassan. I think he's being a homer because Abdul Razak Al Hassan is from like uh, Africa for sure. I think I want to say Nigeria where Cell the Red lives in South Africa. So he might be playing the homer card there. But whatever, he's got a, he's got a chance. Then we have um, Fight Night Picks Matt. Taking Abdul Razak Al Hassan. And his brother Craig. Take in Joaquin Buckley. Here, I hate to pick all, well I didn't, so I picked straighter, but um, yeah, I'm gonna have to go with the favorite here. I just like, I think Joaquin Buckley is just better. Al Hassan is, don't get me wrong, he definitely has the puncher's chance to get that, get that knockout. They both, like I said, they're both tra trading head kick knockouts. It's gonna be a fire fight. This is gonna be, Violence. What is the under, over under? Look, the bookie's got the over under set of one and a half rounds. Over is minus 105. Under is minus 121. So they even are unsure it's going to go into round two, or you know, past past one and a half rounds. So yeah, I'm taking Joaquin Buckley to get it done here. I think he's just. Uh, I think he's just. Bet. And look at 27, 36. Is there? Three inch height, or I'm sorry, three inch reach for Buckley too. Oh yeah, I'm sold on, on Jaqueline Buckley here. The new Mansa, I think he's gonna get it done. I think he's gonna probably, um, Al Hassan has, he did take that straight right round one knockout to uh, Chaos Williams. But he's also one knockout first round. This is gonna be interesting. I don't think it's gonna go the distance. I'm gonna, so I'm gonna say Buckley inside the distance, probably TKO or KO or TKO. I'll give him rounds two. So there you have it. To recap, time check. Oh, it's almost past my bedtime. How am I doing on time here? I'm over a little bit. So to recap, I have Jesse Strader winning a decision over the, the monster um, Chad and Helliger. It just this is just it's I got it's a dog or pass spot for me because I don't these I'm not I mean 
he has neither one of these guys have beat any real names except for Brady Heist. He What's his name again? That's how good High Stand. Who's I barely know that name because he had that win in Ultimate Fighter that card after, you know what I mean? So then I have Parker Porter, big favorite, but that's with the full Capper consensus. Can't go against that. Everybody's fading Alan Bedo. It's not like they're picking Parker, they're just fade, picking against Alan Bedo. I would like I I think it's a bad matchup for Alan Bedell. Parker Porter, I think, has good boxing, good stand-up. It's going to be fun on the feet. It's definitely not going to go to the ground. If it does, Parker Porter should have the advantage there, too, because he's thick. He's wide. He's got the mass. And finally, I have your Queen Buckley knocking out Abdul Razak Al-Hassan, TKO, round two. Might even happen in round one, but I think it's going to not... I don't see it going the distance at all. Suppose it could. Deb thinks, thinks thinks it's going to. But uh, anyway, gather the info. Place those bets. Cash those tickets. I really appreciate you watching, sticking through this with me. Um, so go ahead and fill the comments with who you think is going to win these fights and why. I'd love to read everybody else's opinions on this. I am a capper comparer. So, as you know, especially if you guys are taking underdog picks, I love seeing that shit. I love seeing arguments, the contrarians, the, the devil's advocates, the people given the reasoning to take an underdog. That's why I love, I love live chats when somebody's supporting the underdog. I like that. That's, you know, underdog story. But uh, go ahead, fill the, fill the below with comments. Leave a like, share it with your friends and all that good stuff. Good luck on your bets, and I'll see you guys tomorrow for some main card, main card fight, uh, capper comparison picks. All right, good night, guys.